it's boring, it's beige. But it's too expensive to fix, so you just have to live with it. Yep, sometimes when you buy a new home, you inherit a kitchen that's a long way from your dream. And that's the case here for Christina and her family. They're busy and the budget is already stretched, but I think I have a solution. So Christina, what do you like about your kitchen? I love the fact that I can watch my three boys outside playing. I love the layout of the kitchen. I love the open spaces. It's I've got big, a lot isn't of it? cupboard spaces. Yeah, it's great. What is it that you don't like? I don't like the colour. It blends in with the floor. It's a bit same same, it is isn't it? It's a bit the so same. You've got this that rolls into the doors, which rolls into the floor. It's a bit dull. And I would also love to have a stove that works. Oh, this doesn't work at no. all. You can't not have a stove. OK, so we'll get you a new stove. We can do something with a sink, maybe change the bench tops. But I really don't see any logical reason to change the layout, to change the cupboards. So I think we can save certainly a lot of money and a lot of mess by just doing cosmetics in here, really. That's all it needs. We'll have it done in time for dinner. What do you think? Sounds good. Easy, easy kitchen. I like this one. OK, so our main inspiration is to lose the brown beige expanse. I'm aiming for a fresh modern feel using neutral greys on the bench and a splashback with contrast provided by crisp white on all the cabinetry. Hey, it's easy. <laughs> To do up your kitchen cosmetically, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Now, you can always send your doors off to have them professionally re-sprayed and painted. It does take a lot of time and it's expensive. Or you can go the DIY option. Now, if you've got timber cupboard doors, super easy. A very light sand and a prime and away you go. But if you've got laminate doors, well, it's a whole different kettle of fish. What's a laminate door? Well, if you go up closely and have a look at your kitchen cupboard doors, you can actually see what they're made of. Give them a little scratch. If they feel kind of plasticky, chances are they're laminate. If you look inside, they've got that chipboard inner. Now, the trouble with laminate is it doesn't like having paint stuck to it. So it's all about the prep. You can paint it, but you really do need to clean and sand and prime. So no matter how clean your kitchen is, you're going to have some caked on grease. It all has to come off. And at this stage, because we are painting, it's a good idea to take the handles off. Makes the job a lot easier. The hinges can stay on, but the handles have to go. If you're going to go to the trouble of hand painting a kitchen, the last thing you want to have happen is your paint to peel off. And if you're using ordinary paint onto laminate with no primer in between, chances are that's exactly what's going to happen. The paint will literally peel off like a sticker. You need to use the right primer. This is a pretty new product from Dulux. It's called Precision. I really like this stuff. It has super strong adhesion. They say you don't need to give it a light sand first, but I always like to just, you know, just rough up the surface just to give it a light key. Pop on the primer, then once that's dry, you can just paint over the top of it. It's a really good product. So it's really important not to skip this step because this honestly will make the difference between your paint peeling and not peeling. I don't very often wear gloves for painting, but I am because this stuff sticks so very well. It is water-based. It'll be dry in about an hour, ready for the top coat. So while I give that primer a little time to dry, I just thought I'd nip inside and get these benches out. Luckily, I've got Tommy to give me a hand. Thank you. I love that bit. <laughs> With the primer dry, you can just go straight on with your favourite top coat paint. Some people love oil-based enamels. These days, most people are going for the water-based ones. They're non-yellowing, but more importantly, they're fast drying. We do want this kitchen to be ready by dinner. Well, the doors are all coming together really well, but as for the rest of the kitchen, when you're painting, you will need to take care of these end panels as well. You just treat them in exactly the same way. Just make sure that they're clean, they're sanded and primed. It's only primer, but it's looking better already. 
chipped edge strips like this on your cabinets and also on your doors can really let a kitchen down. And in here, it's just gonna give away the fact that it's really not new after all. Easy enough to repair. All you need to do is get some of this stuff off the shelf from Bunnings. It's just edge strip. And if you know how to do it, it won't take you long at all. You iron this on, but you do need to get the old strip off first. So the first thing I'm doing here is just using my heat gun, just on a fairly low setting and a sharp chisel. So with that in mind, I've actually clamped down the cupboard door. That holds it nice and safe while I work. So just gently work your way all the way along. And once that's off, you will need to give it a very light sand just to take off the old adhesive. Now with that done, I can go ahead and put on the new strip. Now this stuff gets ironed into place. So I'm using some of that baking paper, the type you use for your biscuits. So the baking paper basically acts to protect the strip while you iron it on. I've just got this iron on a cotton setting. It's not too hot, but it's just warm enough to melt the adhesive on the back of the strip in place. Now make sure that you have a little bit of overlap at either end. That just gives you some extra room just to trim away the excess and gives you a nice, neat finish. A little later, with some more cosmetic changes, the original beige kitchen is unrecognisable. <laughs>